Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. You talked about wanting to put extreme vetting on people trying to come into the United States, but I wonder if you would consider extreme vetting for people trying to buy a gun. If you did what you're suggesting, there would have been no difference three days ago, and you might not have had that very brave person who happened to have a gun or a rifle in his truck go out and shoot him and hit him and neutralize him. And I can only say this, if he didn't have a gun, instead of having 26 dead, he would have had hundreds more dead. So that's the way I feel about it. Welcome to the Savage Nation, the Tuesday edition. That's not how I feel about it. And I recognize that if you're a conservative or on the right or an independent, you're supposed to say like a knee jerker, well, no, we don't want any restrictions on who can own guns. No, we don't want any restrictions on uh, the number of rounds of ammunition you can carry in a clip. I truthfully have been a gun owner since I'm very young, and I'll say it again in case you want to confuse me with some liberal New Yorker. I was on the high school rifle team long before any of the fake conservatives suddenly found that it's a good way to make money to make believe that you're a a right-winger. The fact of the matter is I own guns. I was on the rifle team. I'm not afraid of guns. I have no idea why a human being in this country needs a 30-round clip. That's number one. Number two, apparently people are able to hunt elephants with single-shot rifles for as long as, uh, as I know. I mean, elephant guns had one shot in them. They didn't machine gun elephants, did they? Did they have an assault rifle to kill an elephant? They used an elephant gun, which I think was a thirty oh six round. One single round could bring down an elephant. So what in the hell do you need a 30-round clip for? I know you're all waiting for the government to come uh, and take over your, uh, your community, and you're going to stand up like Paul Revere, and you're going to say, charge. You won't say charge. You'll drop your gun, you'll drop your shorts, and you'll run out like everyone else. So stop pretending that you're a big hero. This is enough is enough. This church shooting is killing me. So I have three questions or four for you today. Should assault weapons be banned? Should multiple round clips be banned? Is is it time to bring back mental hospitals? Should we greatly restrict the wholesale application of antidepressant drugs on a massive population? Huh? And by the way, they're still trying, the FBI is still trying to break into the phone of this piece of human garbage who did this. this. This evil, evil, evil man who did this to the parishioners in that church. His phone is encrypted with Apple encryption devices. And once again, Tim Cook and his gang refuse to give the FBI any codes to break into this murderer's phone, as they have done in the past. I know I'm not supposed to say it, but I am so fed up with these maniacs, whether they're shooting up a church or shooting up this nation, whether they be a Texas church shooter or a Silicon Valley monster who thinks he's bigger than the government, it's time to crack down. And on another topic, by the way, North Korea, is Trump provoking Kim Jong mentally ill on by visiting South Korea and making such provocative statements? Is he intimidating Kim Jong Un? Or is he provoking Kim Jong-un? I want answers to all these questions. Now, just before I went on the air, I stumbled on an article off the Drudge Report. I couldn't believe what I looked at. Texas church gunman escaped from mental health facility in 2012 after threatening military superiors. This maniac was in a nuthouse. And he escaped. And he still got a gun. Well, how did he get a gun if he was in a nut house? How? Because apparently the data system didn't work. His name was never entered by the Air Force. It shows you what geniuses we have in the military. I wonder what clerk in the military did that. What heroic clerk in the uh, Air Force refused to enter this idiot's name into the national database. The maniac who opened fire in a church outside San Antonio, killing at least 26 people, escaped from a mental health facility in 2012, 
after he was caught sneaking guns onto an Air Force base and attempting to carry out death threats made against military superiors, according to a police report. Listen very carefully. I can't believe this article. Officers with the El Paso, Texas police were dispatched to a bus terminal after Devin P. Kelly's escape from a behavioral facility seven miles away in New Mexico. Officers wrote that they were told Kelly, who intended to take a bus out of the state, was a danger to himself and others at the time, and noted that he was also facing military criminal charges. It's the same year that Kelly was court-martialed. He was charged with abusing his wife and son, kicking this little infant in the head. He got a gun. Imagine the country we live in. Can you imagine the country we live in that even a man who escaped a nuthouse and kicked an infant in the head can get a gun? Now, the story is that there was a breakdown in military protocols that failed to flag his domestic violence conviction, which should have kept him from buying guns. But let me tell you something. Even if he was on that database, he could have bought a gun, as we all know. I know, I know. I know all you people are going to say, what about Chicago, which has the strictest gun control laws in America? How come they're able to kill everyone? Blah, 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 blah. I've heard it all before. I've heard all sides of the argument. Well, something has to be done. Kelly was inside the church for a very long period of time. He went around freely as he gunned down people gathering for Sunday morning services. One woman who was wounded during the shootings described Kelly firing at churchgoers who tried to leave, shooting round after round at those injured and wounded on the ground. David Brown's mother, Farida, was shot in the leg, said she described Kelly firing four shots into the torso of a woman on her left. With every shot she was crying, Brown said of the woman, she was just staring at my mom while she tried to comfort her. As he fired rounds into the woman, Farida Brown held her hand, telling her she was heading to heaven. Yeah, she's heading to heaven. She's heading to heaven. You know, this is very trying for me, more so than you can imagine. I am on the, the, the cusp, if you want to put it to you that way, of the publication of God, Faith, and Reason. Today, I don't know if I have any reason or faith left. I can't have much left in me when I see a thing like this and I see the ignorance of the American people, both sides trying to make politics out of this. Immediately, the Democrats trying to impose gun control laws. The bodies are still, are, still, are still on the ground. They're not even cold yet. And the demagogues on the left are immediately trying to seize all guns. They're not going to stop at limiting assault rifles, I can guarantee you. No, sorry, Bob. Now there's a little more to the story. The FBI said today that while they have obtained the killer's cell phone, they cannot get into it. They can't get into it because Tim Cook, who thinks he's God Almighty, Tim Cook and Apple will not give them the encryption codes for the Apple phone. You want to hear who the puppet is here? It's not Tim Cook. It's not Apple. It's not Mark Zuckerberg. The puppets are the U.S. government. The puppet is the U.S. government. The people who run this country are the Silicon Valley pirates. Federal authorities have been critical of the encryption. They say has kept them off devices crucial to investigation. You remember the last high-profile case of the Muslim shooters in San Bernardino, California? Remember when Apple would not give them the encryption codes? Remember the FBI itself had to go to an outside group to help them unlock that device of the Muslim shooters because the tech giant would not help them? If we have a nation of laws, why can't Apple be forced to give up the encryption codes to the FBI? Tell me what's wrong with that. Tell me why Tim Cook should have more power than the FBI. Is that what you wanted? Was Tim Cook of Apple ever elected to office? Did he ever go through a screening where we knew what his background was and said, well, he's a good man and we should vote for him, and now we should have more power than the FBI, more power than DHS, more power than the National Security Agency? We want Tim Cook to run America's encryption devices. Did you ever go to the ballot and vote for Tim Cook to control encryption devices? I didn't. Well, those are some of the topics. Assault weapons should be banned in the United States or not banned? Let's read the pro and con on that one. Let's read the pro ban. A pro ban on assault weapons being banned says, a ban on assault weapons would not be a slippery slope to an all-gun ban. Most individuals seeking a ban on assault weapons just want assault weapons to be banned. Another pro ban argument, assault weapons empower the deranged to kill many people. While the phrase guns don't kill people, people kill people is used widely. 
What it misses is the extent to which assault weapons enable deranged individuals to kill massively. That is 100% true. If this bum only had a single shot rifle, he would have been taken down by some of the men in that, in that church. I can guarantee you they would have broken his skull open with a chair. They had no chance because he had a machine gun in his hand. Law enforcement agents are put at greater risk due to assault weapons. Assault weapons are responsible for one in five deaths of law enforcement agents. A shotgun, pistol, or rifle is all you need for self-defense. That's a thousand percent true. These are powerful weapons with heavy destructive force. And they can easily kill multiple assailants in rapid succession when used properly. You don't need anything more than a shotgun or a pistol next to your bed. And I, in fact, I'll go a step further than you. You're sleeping in the dark. Someone breaks into your house. You can't even aim a rifle in the dark. You could aim a shotgun in the general direction of the, of the uh, intruder. You could generally fire a pistol in the direction of an intruder. You cannot effectively aim a rifle in the direction of an intruder. Not as well. Now, what are the arguments against banning assault weapons? Well, the Supreme Court has affirmed the individual right to bear arms. The Supreme Court has affirmed that the Second Amendment confers an individual right to bear arms. That's the Heller decision. And the intent of the 1994 assault, assault weapons ban was to decrease criminal acts in which assault weapons were used. And by the way, the assault weapons ban did not do this anyway. And while criminals wanted to carry powerful automatic weapons in the 90s, they now prefer handguns as they are concealable and yet still have the necessary deadly force for them to commit crimes. Also against the ban is the argument that assault weapons are superior for self-defense. Another argument against banning assault weapons is that assault weapon bans would not necessarily prevent someone from acquiring one to perform another mass shooting. That's, that's a fallacious argument because it would limit the amount of guns in, in circulation. Okay, so I'm asking you, the people who have lived through this now, not personally, what needs to be done. Should mental hospitals be reopened? Governor Edmund Pat Brown closed them in California. There used to be mental hospitals in every community in America. I remember growing up in Queens, New York, there was Creedmoor Hospital. They locked up the dangerous nuts. Take a look at the streets of New York, the streets of San Francisco, the streets of Dallas, the streets of Chicago. Look at the streets of America, and you tell me that most of these people in the gutters who you call homeless are not mentally deranged. And tell me they don't deserve proper treatment in a mental health facility. They do, and they should be arrested and locked up against their will and get them off the damn streets. Many of them are dangerous psychopaths. They're not just poor, downtrodden, sick people. That's number one. Psychiatric meds. Big, big story. First, you need to ban the psychiatric meds from the broad-scale use in which they are currently applied. Point blank. We can no longer be puppets of the pharmaceutical industry. Phone number is 855-407-282. This is the Savage Nation. Now, many of you are thinking cynically, you know, all he's trying to do is appeal to liberals by calling for an assault weapons ban or restriction. Well, let me tell you something. Not one liberal outlet has said, oh, look at that. There's the former conservative Michael Savage calling for an assault weapons ban. Let's have him on our show. NPR didn't call. ABC, CBS, NBC. No one called. So don't think I'm doing it because I want to be on their television shows. I am a man who tries to express to you what I think makes sense. It is what I have done for 23 going on, 24 years, I believe. I don't know how long it is. It's almost a quarter of a century of talking. Uh, as I've said to you before, I call him as I see him. You don't have to agree with me. But please don't crucify me for disagreeing with your doxy on guns because I no longer think that Americans need to run around with 30-round clips and assault rifles, not after this church shooting. Something has to change, and it's up to we the people to demand that the idiotic, cowardly, imbecilic, corrupt politicians do something to protect us before another house of worship is shot up by another Kelly. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com.
questions are very clear. Should constitutional amendments be preserved, meaning the Second Amendment? Of course, we believe in it. But when the hell did the Second Amendment ever say you shall have the right to have a basically an assault weapon? That's what it is. Let's stop parsing words. I own, I own them. I know what they are. What do I really need it for? Tell me. What am I waiting for? The day the government comes to get me? And what am I going to do? Hold off a platoon of uh, government agents? You know, you people are living in a dream world. Look at what happened where people had machine guns. What are they using them for? No, you don't need them. In fact, I'm going to give you another reason why you don't need an assault weapon for home defense. Are you ready for it? You haven't read this anywhere yet. I haven't heard it on radio, seen it on television. Are you ready for this? Every cop knows this. Let us say someone breaks into your house. And you use a a um, uh, um, oh a Ruger Mini 14, an AR 15, whatever you have, to fire in his direction. Those rounds will go through a wall and kill one of your family members. They're so potent they'll go through a wall. Do you understand what I just said to you? Something you have not thought about, but every cop knows that a an assault weapon is one of the worst things you could ever have for home defense. You never heard that yet, did you? And I'm a gun owner ever since high school, so please, it's coming from someone who knows what he's talking about. Most cops in this country would agree with me, incidentally. I can't imagine there's a police officer listening to this show across America or anywhere else in the world who would say, yes, Americans have a right to have an assault weapon. I have no idea what you need them for. That's number one. Number two, it will go through, the rounds will go through a wall, kill one of your family members. Shotgun is the single best defense mechanism for a house. Learn how to use it. They're complicated weapons, by the way. Shot, cause shotguns, the mechanism of a shotgun is very complicated. I will tell you that right now. Loading, unloading, making sure the chamber is empty. It's not for an amateur. This is a very, very complex weapon, um, a shotgun. A handgun is probably as good as you're going to get. 15, 20 round clip. What, what more do you need? Handgun, shotgun to defend yourself in your house. What do you need that for? Tell me what for. I really want to know what you think you need it for. What do you need it for? What do you need it for? And should we reopen the mental hospitals, Governor Brown? Is it not time to clean up the streets of the mentally deranged and give them the help that they need? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. These are times the test man's soul, and it's very it would be very easy for me to get up here and say, well, no, the Second Amendment is a blanket um, freedom to own guns and do whatever you want with them. It is not. Every one of the amendments to the Constitution, I will remind you of this, has restrictions. In other words, the Second Amendment says we shall have the right to bear arms, upheld by uh, many court cases, Supreme Court in particular, Heller in particular. Without restriction? No restrictions at all? Really? Okay, so let's have a conversation about the other amendments. The First Amendment of the Constitution says freedom of the press, freedom of speech. I have freedom of speech. You have freedom of speech up to a point. There are restrictions. You can't threaten the president. Threaten the president, you're going to be visited by the Secret Service. That's a restriction. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. That's a restriction to the First Amendment. So if there are restrictions to some amendments, then why should there be no restrictions on the Second Amendment? How did that happen? You say, well, there are. Oh, really, there are? Then even a, a nut who escaped the mental hospital can buy one? No, then, then you got to tighten it up a little bit more. I don't want the next nut getting an assault rifle. Do you? Texas church gunman escaped from mental health facility in 2012 after threatening military superiors. Sorry, he shouldn't have been able to get guns. Okay, so he got around the law. What law? Now, I know that this is controversial, and I'll repeat it again until you hear me. You've got to hear me. This is not coming from a left-wing commie Marxist from hell. This is coming from Michael Savage, the father of borders, language, and culture. A gun owner, a gun owner, member of the rifle team in high school. Yes, that matters. Because most of the frauds in the media who claim to be red, white, and blue John Waynes were afraid of guns when they were in high school. Most of them were on medication. That's where I'm coming from. And I don't think there are too many cops who disagree with me. An awful lot of cops are shot by lunatics with assault rifles. 
And I'll repeat again until you hear me. Use the fallacious argument you need for home defense. The rounds will go right through a wall and kill one of your family members. Or worse yet, not worse yet, it can't get worse than that. You're going to unload your 30-round your clip on someone who broke into your house. The bullets will go through a wall and kill your child. Shotgun shells, will, shotgun pellets will not go through a wall, by the way. There was a chance that a handgun's round could go through a wall, but not when you're firing 15 shots as opposed to firing, what, 30 shots over and over again? Why was this man allowed to have an assault rifle? And, and by the way, he was found with multiple... Oh, God, why do I even have to talk about this? Why is the burden falling upon me? Why is it so hard to have a common sense discussion in this country without being accused of being a pinko commie from you nowhere? KBOI in Boise, Idaho, huge station. Art, you're on the Savage Nation from Line 7. What's your opinion? God bless you, Mr. Savage, for your erudite uh, stripping the labels of conservatives and looking at this from a common sense issue. The greatest instrument, modern day instrument, is our U.S. Constitution. And our U.S. Constitution is, is the culmination and fruit of critical thinking, which you're expressing right now. And there is no way that the founding fathers, who were almost like Plato's philosopher's king, ever envisioned this monstrosity with these, with, with, with these automatic weapons. And then did we forget this, 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 this devil in Las Vegas who but for you know, uh, uh, circumstances could have easily killed over a thousand innocent people? Attending, uh, attending a show, and, and uh, moreover, the point, half of those uh, uh, performers there that were gun pro, gun and pro, that's all switched. When they, when they faced that fire and were, were in that situation, have now all said, well, we need to look at the issue differently. Art, are, 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 you, are you a gun owner yourself? I have a shotgun that I haven't used in 10 years because I used to go pheasant hunt, hunting in Pennsylvania. And, and well, that, that's more than the right-wing media hosts who never went hunting. And, and, and more to your point about mental hospitals, I remember when Ed Koch tried to round up the, 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 the clearly visible insane that you see in the streets, bipolar, schizophrenic, and the first people were the ACU to say they have a right to be criminally insane. Well, the ACLU, could, it, look, let, don't get me started on them. They are the most mentally ill people in America. They use a law degree as a weapon to kill all of us. Now, you know where I stand on the ACLU. The ACLU was never elected. They're just a group of thugs, left-wing thugs. They have no essential power other than the power of the courts, which they created by putting their own people inside the courts. You're you want to get me started on banning? I would close down the ACLU. I would seize their assets, and I would investigate their, their funding. But we're not here talking about the ACLU. We are talking about banning assault weapons. We are talking about reopening the mental hospitals. We are talking about restricting the overuse of psychoactive chemicals in the form of uh, Prozac-like compounds, SSRIs. We are also talking about another issue that's very, very important. Tim Cook of Apple refusing to cooperate with the FBI once again by giving the FBI the encryption codes of this church shooter's iPhone. How the hell do we have a country where one man who runs one corporation has more power than the, uh, than the nation itself? Subpoena the documents. and then. All right, look, I, I don't want to get over. As it is, I got a migraine from this show already yesterday. I'm sending you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason. I hope you can find it all in the book. I'm almost tongue-tied from what goes on in this world. Almost tongue-tied from what goes on. There's no sense anymore. The world exploded for me that day in that church. My view of God, my view of faith, my view of reason exploded. My legs got cut out from under me. I tried my best to maintain my belief in some higher power who could control things like this. But, well, it actually goes to my book itself where I say God is omnipresent but not omnipotent. I do say that in the book. That's the one thing that saved me 30 years ago from giving up my faith in God. I'll tell you that. And if you only get that from my book, you'll get an awful lot. I'll say it again, which is this. God is not omnipotent. God is omnipresent. That's my opinion. Because 
It means we have free will. And there are crazy people out there. There are great people out there. There are saintly people out there. I don't believe God controls everything that we do. I don't believe God pulled the trigger of that assault rifle in that church. If you want to argue God, maybe he let the man who shot him pull the trigger, but I don't believe that at all. I think that was chance as well. God is omnipresent. If I believe God was omnipotent, I would cease to believe this minute right on this radio show. I'd say don't buy my book. But I don't believe God is omnipresent. I don't believe he controls the evil of the world. Are there cases where God can enter and intervene? I hope so. Go in a cancer ward, a leukemia ward with little children and tell me what you think about omnipotence and, and omnipresence. Go and see the suffering and the dying on a battlefield. Go see the soul, the sailor, the, sorry, the, the military guys who come home without legs or arms. Tell me what, what they believe. Chance, there's chance. Ask anyone who's been in combat. They'll tell you it's pure chance when the bullets start flying. Who gets hit and who doesn't get hit. So no, I'm not ready to burn my book, God, Faith, and Reason. I'm ready to tell you that I've been struggling with the same question since I've been a child. Where is God? Where is he today? Where is he today when we need him? Expect him to come down in a, in a white robe? He's there. I can't say any more about it right now. I'm not ready to talk about the scriptures, God and country, God and man, God, faith, and reason. Not yet. Not yet. I'm still a child when it comes to these issues. I'm simply a child when it comes to these bigger issues. At the end of the day, we're all children. We don't have the answers. We have, yeah, they say the questions. That's true. I do have one answer, which I gave to you just now, which is that God is not omnipotent. God is omnipresent. That will give you peace of mind. And if you just get that line out of my whole book, it's worth the price of admission. There's a lot more in there than that. Why did God create the world? What is man's role in creation? Does God intervene in how much? What is the relationship between God and science? It's all in my book. Are they the definitive answers? Of course not. It's one man's opinion. People have been pondering this since the burning bush. <laughs> since the burning bush, people have been asking these questions. Let's go back to the simple politics of the day. Assault weapons, should they be banned or not? Do Americans favor stricter gun control laws, yes or no? Well... You can get any poll to say anything you want. The president came out and said no. He said gun control may have stopped the hero from stopping the attack. I actually don't believe that's true either, incidentally, because I don't know that he stopped the attack with an assault rifle. What rifle did the hero use who was shooting at him? What was he f firing? What, what was the duel in the sun? What weapon was he using? Stephen Wil Wilford has a name, and he said the man who shot the uh, hero, meaning Stephen Wilford, says I'm no hero. This is courtesy of KHBS Television. Can we please, please hear soundbite number four in the Savage Nation? All I want to stress today is the people at that church, they're friends of mine, their family, and every time I heard a shot, I knew that that probably represented a life. I was scared to death. I was. I was scared for me, and I was scared for every one of them, and I was scared for my own family that just lived less than a block away. I, 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 I'm no hero. I, I am not. I think my God, my Lord, protected mm. me and gave me the skills to do what needed to be done. And I just wish I could have gotten there faster, but I didn't know. I didn't know what was happening. Man who shot Texas killer, I'm no hero. But we have a lot of heroes, though, in the media talking about you need an assault weapon. You need 30 round. Why not get a 300 round clip? Why don't you get one? That, why don't you have full machine guns? Why shouldn't every American have the right to have a Thompson submachine gun type weapon, which can fire hundreds of rounds? Why not? Where does it end? What? When did it become that you could have an assault rifle? When did that come in? I don't even know when that entered the, the dialogue. Where did that come in? I remember buying an AR-15 back in 1982, and I bought a Ruger Mini-14, which I shot at a, 
a rifle range out in Petaluma, California. I used to love those weapons. I like the Ruger Mini 14 better than the AR-15. I, I, I am quite familiar with one of the weapons. The other one became illegal in California, by the way, and I had to get move it out of state, which I did. It was a tremendous sense of power. A man feels empowered, a human, I should say man, woman, whatever, humans who like guns feel very powerful in a rifle range or a pistol range. However, there's a big difference between the right to bear arms and the right to bear machine guns, in my humble opinion. And had there been no multiple rounds, uh, round clips permitted, which this piece of human trash, this maniac had, many, many 30-round clips, banana clips. Can you imagine this? He would have killed more. He would have killed more. And he was thrown. He listened to me. I said to you, the gunman escaped from a mental health facility in 2012. He escaped the nuthouse because it threatened military superiors. He still was able to get a gun. So I think this is the most important topic of the day. And the, again, I want to close this segment with a statement I made a little earlier. Many of you are saying I'm being very cynical right now and I'm only trying to appeal to liberals so they'll go buy my book or have me on a show. That's totally false for two reasons. One, I didn't get sudden calls uh, overnight. Oh, Savage, you said we should ban assault rifles. Now you're one of us. Please come on our show. No, that didn't happen. All I did was potentially alienate you, my core audience. Maybe you'll say the heck with Savage. I don't want to listen to him anymore. Maybe you'll say I don't want to listen to him. I don't want to buy his books anymore. I hope not. But the day I can't express myself through a, um, a logical faculty, through a series of logical steps, come to a logical conclusion, is the day I will, I will quit radio and disappear into the sunset. You'll never hear from me again. I felt that I had to say this today, and I will say it again. I'll say it again. I think that 30-round clips need to be banned, and I think assault weapons are unnecessary in this nation. I also think Tim Cook of Apple should be arrested by the federal government for refusing to cooperate with the FBI and give, him, give them the encryption codes of this maniac's phone. Is Trump provoking Kim Jong-un by visiting South Korea? Yes or no. Should we reopen mental hospitals? These are important questions, which I hope you will stay with me and answer on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. me talk about the neck pain Allison dealt with over five years. Five years. Well, she tried everything. She told me personally, Relief Factor was the only thing that helped her. And again, this is why I'm suggesting you go to relieffactor.com. It's simple. If it's hard for you to take a long walk because a knee, back, or foot pain or getting out of bed is difficult, getting out of a chair or sewing a needlepoint might be painful, simply typing at your desk can be painful and you're sick of it. I already told you I've talked with the owners of Relief Factor. I know a great deal about the four ingredients in Relief Factor. I've studied and even written about the ingredients and how they can help lower your pain because they're anti-inflammatory, which is why if you're in pain, you need to give this a shot. Give it a try. The Relief Factor three-week three week quick start is only nineteen ninety five. And remember, nearly 80% of people who do order the quick start go on to order again. That tells me something. Go to relieffactor.com, relieffactor.com now. Ed on line seven, welcome to the show. Hey, Dr. Savage, you mentioned earlier about what, why would someone need to have a round, uh, a clip that holds 30 bullets. I kind of, a sane person, if a sane person wants to have a gun that can shoot 100 bullets, what is, what's, the, what's the big deal with that? It's to, it, well, what's the big deal? Of course, nothing big deal if they're sane, but the guy in, in Texas, was he sane? Well, well so, someone that's on antidepressants, pills, someone that's on medication, they shouldn't have a gun. That's right. Well, that's that's a given. But somehow we got around that. The Air Force, the Air Force didn't report it, et cetera. That that's not the issue. If these if these high powered assault rifles were not available and uh, thirty round clips were not available, all those people wouldn't have been slaughtered in that church, Ed. 
Yeah, but you now, can... you, I see on the screen it says, I don't need a 710 horsepower car either. I have a, a Dodge Hellcat. That is true, but a car is designed for transportation, not for killing. A gun is designed for one thing only. What is that for? What is a gun made for? Only to kill. Only to kill, nothing else. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Welcome back to The Savage Nation, Texas killer. Escaped from mental health facility in 2012 after threatening military superiors. He still got his hand on an assault weapon. When he was shot, he found they, they found him with a number of 30-round uh, clips. Should assault weapons be banned? Should we bring back mental hospitals? Should Tim Cook of Apple be arrested for an, refusing to cooperate with the FBI and giving the FBI the encryption codes to the shooter's uh, phone? Is Trump provoking Kim Jong-un by visiting South Korea and making provocative statements, or is he subduing Kim Jong-un? Should SSRIs and other like drugs be greatly restricted? Now, many of you are asking yourself today, why must we suffer? Why does God forsake even the good among us? Why do little children suffer so terribly in cancer wards around the world? Why are so many good men slaughtered for no reason? Many of you have given up on God. You think it's nonsense. You haven't been in a church or a synagogue your entire adult life. Some of you are Jewish. You had a bar mitzvah, and that was the last time you were in a temple. Oh, once in a while, you observe Rosh Hashanah. You do the mumbo-jumbo. You put on the hat, and then you go and have a meal and think you did your thing. Or you come back to do a thing for the dead. You tell yourself you don't really believe in it, but there's a little tiny part of you that does. And what will happen is as you get older, it will become bigger and bigger and bigger. When you're young, you can believe in nothing except your pleasure center. That's the norm. That's the way it's supposed to be. But as you get older, as things happen to you, as things break in your body, you want to turn to somebody, but you don't know who to turn to. These questions have plagued me to such an extent that I've lost my faith many times along the rocky road we all walk. But we all must walk along this road, no matter how much our feet bleed, no matter how they ache. Years ago... I, Michael Savage, stumbled upon a small book entitled Peace of Mind. In it, the author wrote that he does not believe in God. In, that he does not believe that God is omnipotent. He believes God is omnipresent, meaning he is everywhere at all times, but he does not control everything that occurs. The author wrote that if he believed that God was omnipotent and controlled everything that happens, babies with cancer, innocent men and women in churches slaughtered, innocent children raped, he would cease to believe and become an atheist on the spot. But he concluded that God is in fact not, um, not omnipotent, but only omnipresent, meaning we do have free will and control our destinies. Yes, there are things encoded in us, perhaps through genetics, perhaps through faith that we cannot control. Perhaps we are born for certain faiths. But within the parameters of these genetic or predetermined destinies, we have a wide latitude. And that is why we need the guidebook for mankind called the Holy Bible. Those are from the pages 15 and 16 of my soon-to-be-published book, God, Faith, and Reason. And although this shooting in Texas was not about me, certainly not about me, it may as well be about me because it's a week before the publication of the book, and frankly, my faith is being challenged, tested to its core. I hope that you can find some peace and comfort and continue to be a believer and continue to go to church despite these these situations, and I hope that my book 
will give you some comfort along uh, the way. Now let's take the callers. Let's take the callers. Yes, indeedy. Where is the man who says that we need the, the uh, weapons to keep out fire? Here it goes. Uh, Charlie on KFPW Radio in Arkansas, I believe, line four. Welcome to the show, Charlie. What's on your mind? Yes, Dr. Savage. Uh, in our 242 years of freedom, we've never been invaded by an outside force. And that is due to an armed citizenry, and our weaponry has kept up with... Uh, uh, the times, so to speak, uh, uh, no, there is no other, I do, I have assault weapons, you know, but I do not use them or have them for home security. Uh, other reasons, and uh, I'll leave it at that, but, uh, it's a crazy world we live in, and, uh, so many people feel more safe when they are armed to the teeth. No, I understand that. It's a psychological crutch. But are you really more safe owning an assault rifle? Not necessarily, no. No, absolutely not. But that is our psyche today. In yeah, it gives us a sense of power that we have a, 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 basically a machine gun in our house. I know it's semi-automatic. I know it's a fine difference. And it, gives, it makes us feel powerful, very powerful. Uh, but we are, not addressing the intel we are not addressing the intelligent sane people. We're addressing the Texas church shooters who are listening to this show how many more do you think there are like that out there who shouldn't have a, a weapon such as that in their hands how would we know well for everyone there is there's a hundred thousand good americans that do not do that and uh, well, what are well, what do we need that? okay you're a rational man charlie and i'm glad you didn't give up on my show simply because we differ in opinion on a day like today after this horrible tragedy what do you need that automatic that semi-automatic weapon for for what well, there again, uh, it's something that we haven't had to use or need. Uh, there again, going back, we have never been invaded by an outside force. And well, we are being invaded right now. We're being invaded by Islamo fascists every day. From within. From We're being invaded by Islamo fascists who are now killing us with cars, for God's sakes. Absolutely, Dr. Savage. And, uh, and that's a result of the ACLU and the other pack of uh, the Kabbalites. In the cabal cost the Demo called the Democrat Socialist Islamist Party USA. They don't need assault weapons to kill us. And and I uh, and that's how they're getting around it. Uh, the political correctness and uh Yeah, well, I'm I'm trying to stand here and, and see it for what it is. I've tried to stop the invasion the best I could, but now we have a domestic terrorist who used an assault weapon on churchgoers of the same faith that he originally was raised in and of the same ethnic group. Go figure that one out. Okay. Yeah. It's heartbreaking, and I don't think we're going to come to a, a, a an accord today, Charlie. It's a very time, a very hard time for me. I'm sure it is for you. You're probably soul searching, just as I am, Charlie. Charlie, are you still my friend? Would you still listen to the show? Oh, absolutely, Doctor Savage. Absolutely. Well, then I'm going to send you God, faith, and reason. Maybe you'll find some solace in it, or give it to a friend who might find something in this an uh, important book. Boy, oh boy, these are times that try man's soul. <laughs> they sure are. They certainly are. We can keep talking about it if you'd like or move on. Let's move to the issue of reopening the mental hospitals. Cleaning the streets up of the homeless. Round them up against their will and hospitalize them and give them the help that they need. I live in San Francisco, the filthiest city in the United States of America. Also going through a crime wave that is swept under the rug by the Democrat socialist machine. They own the newspapers. They won't let you see the bums. The bums are assaulting people, never mind the disease that they're spreading, never mind the sickness, never mind the assaults by the homeless. Look at what's happening in this once beautiful city because they're too cowardly to stand up to the homeless lobby, which makes a fortune off keeping people in the streets. Should we reopen the mental hospitals and hospitalize those in the gutters. WABC Dan on line seven. Go ahead. Your opinion counts. Uh, thanks for taking my call, Dr. Savage. Um, you really pushed a lot of my buttons today uh, in a lot of areas. But getting into the mental health issue, um, I'd like to think it was as simple as you're saying it is. But I, I was in the field for about 10 years, and I had personal experience 
in my own family where my mother was diagnosed schizophrenic, committed suicide when I was 17. I'm uh, very sorry to hear that. That's a tragedy. Yeah, well, I'm 65 now, so, uh, you know, I-, I can handle all of this. But listening to you, I'm saying to myself, does he really understand the magnitude of, of trying to deal with these issues? As a result of my personal experience as a child growing up, because it started from when I was five years old, I ended up getting into the field of mental health, and I'm sure it had to do with, um, you know, my uh, wanting to understand what, what this was all about. Uh, in the process of doing that, I ended up getting in and working with families and teenagers and gangs in the streets and had all kinds of experiences uh, trying to understand all of it. It really is a mixture of so many different things that you can't just say, well, let's just throw this person in the hospital and see if we can straighten them out or, or institutionalize them. It's very complex. So well, I understand, but that leads that leads us to inaction where we do nothing. And as a result, take a look at New York City today. How many violent people are in the streets of New York uh, called homeless? How, how many times have you walked past a homeless person in New York City who has threatened you in one way or another? No, I agree with you. I think, it, I think we have to do something. I'm not saying not to take action. All I'm saying is we have to be cautious about how we take that action. Um, we, we, well, let's start with the obvious. Let's start with the obvious. Get the violent, homeless off the streets and, and institutionalize them. And forget the ACLU. Put the ACLU lawyers in the bug house with them and let them take care of them in the bug house. <laughs> let them file their writs in the nut house along with their good friends that they love so much that they have nothing to do with in real life. They're doing it just to wreck society. You know it and I know it. I know about civil libertarians. Most of them are liars through and through. They do it simply to goad people, and they don't care about the results. So I'm not saying arrest everyone who has a slight psychiatric issue. I'm saying start with the violent homeless in the streets. What's wrong with that idea? Not a, Nothing at all. Anybody who's violent should be off the streets. That's the whole purpose of a mental hospital. In other words, should the guy in San Francisco who, who was walking around with a golf club three weeks ago as I walked through a park, you're telling me the police shouldn't have had the power to take that guy and lock him up and throw him into a facility? And the only reason they can't is because the homeless mafia in San Francisco is stronger than the people are. Well, they could do that, except that they're going to have to deal with the political fallout because... Well, then let's deal with the political fallout. Let's deal with it. Exactly. Let's deal with it by talking about it right now. We have reached, look, we've reached past the saturation point of the homeless bums in this country. We're way past the point of absorbing any more of this. And something along the lines of reopening psychiatric facilities and putting the most violent ones in there so they can get the help that they need is required. Now, I'm, look, I'm aware of the fact that during the era of the Soviet repression, and many Russian listeners listen to this show, they're terrified of psychiatrists. They're terrified of state-run mental hospitals because anyone who disagreed with the government in the Soviet Union was declared mentally ill and put into state psychiatric facilities. I'm aware of that as well. I understand the pitfalls and dangers of everything, but we cannot permit ourselves to become paralyzed with every decision that we make. No. I thank you for calling. I'm sending you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason. I hope it gives you some comfort and will give you some insights that you may need in your daily life. This is the Savage Nation. It's 18 minutes after the hour. If you care to join the show, there are no open lines because this is a day that all of America is listening and most of America would like to call, but they cannot. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Inevitable that we have to talk about guns. I mean, the gun the gun was used. He went one person to the other. He shot the injured. He looked at a little baby and shot the baby in the head. Reloaded. Didn't have to reload. 30-round clips. Very easy. Just keep pulling the trigger. If this psychotic had a single-shot rifle, he would have had to chamber around every time he wanted to kill someone, as ugly as that is to discuss during which time parishioners could have slammed them over the head with a chair. But when a man is pulling the trigger on a semi-automatic rifle, there's no chance to defend yourself. 
So I keep hearing from all the John Waynes in the media, why, if everyone had a gun in that church, you know, sitting behind a microphone somewhere, it's easy to say. Although it's not a bad idea, actually, carry a pistol into a church if it's legal. I'll be very blunt with you. Well, I can't say what I'm going to say. Let me think about it very carefully. Uh, let's leave it at that. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at all. If it's legal, carry one into a church. Where should that stop then? I, where, where else should you carry a gun now? Everyone's a John Wayne now? Everyone should carry a gun. There are people who are not equipped to carry a gun. They don't want to carry a gun. They're afraid to carry a gun. They can hurt themselves with a gun. They can hurt others with a gun. And the police are supposed to be able to defend us. But you can't defend against every possibility. Just as modern medicine, as great as it is, cannot protect us against all diseases and illnesses, all conditions, so too it's true that nothing can really protect us at the end of the day. There's a whole string of things that occur to injure us, whether it be disease or disaster, being in the wrong place at the wrong time, going exposing yourself to a, a, dr a disease on an airplane when you didn't think it would happen and, and getting sick. So, no, the police couldn't be in that church. What, every church now should have an armed guard in it? Is that what you want? Every church should now have an armed guard at the door. May not be a bad idea, given the state of the world we're living in today. I believe every Jewish temple should have an armed guard in it. I've said so for years. With the invasion of the Islamic terrorists coming in under the guise of freedom and asylum, any Jewish temple that doesn't have an armed guard is run by fools. That's all I can say to you. Well, there are other topics to talk about, I guess. Institutionalization is a very big problem because we're not institutionalizing the violently mentally ill. They're in the streets. They're in the streets. They've turned our streets into outdoor mental, mental hospitals. Many of you listen to this show and you don't live in big cities. You don't know how bad they are. You don't know what it's like. I get reports every day from decent people. Many of them are liberals, by the way, who I talk to here and there, a hairdresser, a barber, whatever. And I don't know what their politics are. They're probably not as conservative as mine are. And they tell me, that, oh, yes, you know, you may have a point on that, the violent mentally ill. They're getting very bad here in the city. My brother was punched in the chest by one yesterday. Uh, a man came after me and hit me the other day. Uh, I saw two bums fornicating outside my doorway in the streets of San Francisco. You think I'm making this up? No, I'm not making any of this up. There is a crime wave. There's a bum wave. There's a stink wave in San Francisco because liberalism is a mental disorder. And this mental disorder belongs hospitalized or else we're all going to suffer from it. More than half of Americans favor strict gun laws. Assault weapons should be banned or shouldn't be banned in the United States. Should Tim Cook of Apple be indicted for refusing to cooperate with the, with the FBI? Is Trump provoking Kim Jong-un by visiting South Korea? These are questions. I need answers. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Back up. Additional headlines uh, from the news. You can go to michaelsavage.com. I have a lot of great stories up there. And you can get a free newsletter a couple of times a week simply by signing up. It'll come to your inbox. It summarizes my show. Military foul up allowed killer to buy guns. Fatal error. New York Post. Texas shooting heroes reunited in poignant scene. They really are heroes. God bless them. Trump abandoned his usually aggressive bellicose attitude with North Korea by saying, let's make a deal. Huh. Okay, we'll see where that goes. Oh, yeah, okay. A uh, black man admits putting racist graffiti on his own car. And it's not the first time I've seen that. Nope, not the first time I've seen that. Manhattan District Attorney to seek Weinstein indictment next week. Wow, that's a heavy-duty one. He tried. Did you, hear, did you read the story about Weinstein hiring ex-Mossad agents from a private security firm? one of whom was a woman Mossad agent, that's Israeli intelligence, who posed as a woman victim in order to, uh, let us say, make herself look like a victim and 
to feel out the accusers and see if he could stop the uh, the article that came out. It's unbelievable to me how far people will go. Unbelievable. 855-407-282 is the phone number. MichaelSavage.com is the website. All these topics are fair game. What else is in the news? Missing teen believed to be victim of sex trafficking. Sorry, I don't know who that is. Park Avenue neurosurgeon arrested for sexually assaulting patient. Where is this going to end? First, it was the actors. Now, who's next with the with the with the claims? How many of them are fake? You know, I'm thinking about this right now. This sexual assault hysteria that's going on. It's a witch hunt in many cases. Not all, but many. I know you're not supposed to say it. You're not allowed. Everyone's a victim all of a sudden. Even those willingly who went to bed with these pigs are suddenly victims. But I remember again in my own life as a kid, Queens, New York, ordinary kid. There was a local doctor. Family, every every neighborhood had a family doctor. I remember hearing the whispers of the women that he would not see women alone in his office without the presence of a nurse because one of the crazy women in the neighborhood had falsely accused him. So don't think that every woman who makes this claim uh, is a victim. You know, there are fakers. You know that, men and women. You do know that, don't you? It's an easy shot for money, isn't it? That's another story. Eight five, uh, I gave you the number. Okay, let's go to the next couple of callers uh, on the show. Let's see what the people have to say. You know, I'm dragging today. I feel I feel very, very down from all of this. This is a very depressing topic. I realize that talk radio really should be more entertaining than what you're getting today. How do I entertain you when, when my heart is so down? What am I supposed to do? Make believe I'm happy because well, I'm supposed to be a cheerleader now in America after this happened? I mean, I am not a member of that church. You know that. I'm not of that group. But when you, you hear the, these are some of the nicest, kindest people on the planet. There wasn't an evil person in that church, I can guarantee you. These were the bedrock of America. And here's a guy comes in and kills grandmothers, grandfathers, baby shoots them in the head in front of people. How in the world can you get up the next day and not be brokenhearted over it? You almost have to be inhuman to push all of this uh, aside. I know I'm not supposed to identify with them. I, I don't know them. It didn't happen to me. You know, big deal. Why should I care? I should be like everyone else in the media right now, talking about the Office of Management and Budget with a big smile or uh, the tax plan or, you know, the big smile, big pancake makeup, tie looks good. I can't do it. It's not me, not my show. Whatever happened to Robert Mueller, by the way? That was very big news before this. Where'd Mueller all of a sudden? Mueller this, Mueller that, Mueller did this, Mueller did that. Mueller said this, Mueller said that. I, I, where'd that go all of a sudden? Where that? I don't understand it. Mueller. Now Mueller is suddenly pushed off the news. Very bad for his, uh, very, very bad for Mueller's uh, book deal. I'll tell you that after it's all over. That he's out of the news for two seconds. Fashion. Hope Hicks wears a tuxedo to Japan State Dinner. What is this, like Annie Hall now? Hope Hicks is the press secretary for Donald Trump. I've communicated with her over the years. Nice enough person. Very beautiful woman. I see by the picture. Why did she wear a tuxedo to a Japan State dinner? Hope Hicks ditched her usual dress for a tuxedo and bow tie? What is this like Annie Hall now? What is this about? Can anyone explain to me if this was intelligent on a, on a foreign tour to Asia to do this? For a woman to wear a tuxedo? What is this about? I, I don't understand the world I'm living in. It's now about someone in his inner circle upstaging the president. Hope Hicks in a tux at a Japan State banquet. Unbelievable to me. That's not an insult to the Japanese. It was a sharp, very au courant look for the 29-year-old fashion fashionista who generally favors feminine floral flocks. Stylish women are embracing the tux and the less formal pantsuit. Okay, and I'm supposed to pay. I don't understand. This is the world I'm living in now? This is, I, 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 I'm, I'm a flabbergasted. It's not, I don't care about the tuxedo. She could wear a pipe and have a mustache for all I care. But at a Japanese state dinner with a foreign dignitary, you wear a tuxedo? Oop, there goes the visit to the White House. Guess I spoke out again. Oops, there goes the, the Christmas dinner. Oops, there goes the visit. 
So you got to call them as you see them. You got to say it as you see it. Otherwise, you're finished in this world. How many how many times can you make believe what you say things just for your own self advantage until you eventually you forget what you believe? So I figure it's better to just speak what I believe every time in every way on the radio. What about you? Because that's what I've been doing anyway. What year is this? 2017. I lost track. I started radio in 94, 94, 04, 14, 23, 18, 24 years this March. <laughs> I, I do the math sometimes because I don't believe I've been on the radio for 24 years. <laughs> I really don't. And uh, I do believe it's up to God to keep me in the radio or not. Oh, I know he's not omnipotent. I'm, I'm not, you know, omnipresent. But I believe my faith in God, frankly, keeps me going every day. Now, how does that work? If I say in my book, God, Faith, and Reason, that God is, is not omnipotent, but he is omnipresent. How does my faith in God and my belief in a, a, a judgment and a punishment at the time of death and a reward, etc., and an afterlife, if I believe in that, how does my belief in God help me believe in that? Because otherwise, what is the point of living? Can you honestly say to me, if you're an atheist, that you have a true reason to live without any believing, without believing there's anything beyond this? And moreover, wait, answer this question for me, since we're getting into this theological stuff, or we'll get into it more and more as the week goes on, especially in the, these troubling times. You say, well, I don't believe in God. That's for stupid people, dumb, stupid people. I know some people who are pretty smart, PhDs, master's degrees, neurosurgeons, who are devout Christians, devout Jews. I met them. I met them the other night. How would they believe in God if they're so stupid? I met a neurosurgeon the other night, a brilliant man. He believes in God. Was he a dummy also? Because he doesn't believe in you, what you believe in, which is nothing. I have to understand the mind of the non-believer. Let's say you say there's nothing after life. It's all a chance thing. Uh, we came out of the dust in the swamp. You, you watch too much National Geographic channel, and you actually believe all of the stuff that they put up there, naked and afraid. You're naked. You're afraid. You're born out of dust. And then ashes to ashes and dust to dust. And when we're, we're dead, we're dead. And there's nothing thereafter. There's no afterlife. There's no father in heaven. There's no mother and father waiting for you in heaven. I have a very brilliant, nice friend who said to me, and he was raised very religious Jewish, but he isn't at all a believer at all. He's a very smart guy. He's a man in his 80s. He said to me, if, Michael, he said, if I actually believed that I would be seeing my parents when I died, I would have killed myself a long time ago. That's how much I missed them. I mean, it's a heartbreaking statement. But he said this to me for over 20 years now. So I have no answer for him. I don't want to sit and argue with a man who would, you know, <laughs> would take his life if I convinced him there was a heaven. But he has said that to me. And I don't know how a person can believe this is all chance. I don't understand that. I remember, I'm going to say it once against a story I put into God, Faith, and Reason. I'll tell it to you now. I guess it should pop in right now. Many years ago, I was walking in the streets of San Francisco, and there was a hobo, not a homeless bum, white hair, blue-eyed, I was in the habit of talking to a lot of strangers at the time. I've given up on that since the times they are changing. And I don't know, I talked to different people at that time. I talked to this hobo. He wasn't a bum in the sense that he was clean. He had a rucksack and he was just walking the streets. And for some reason, I stopped and talked to this guy. I said, what's your name? He said, it's, it's uh, what do you say? He, says, he said his name was Moses, I believe. Uh, maybe he was psychotic, who knows? So I said to him, Moses, uh, do you believe... I offered him a ride to the freeway on-ramp. I remember down by 5th Street. I was nuts in those days. I took a lot of chances. I used to take sleds down hills I would never take down today. But I, I said to him, do you believe in God? And he looked at me, and he said to me, like with a quizzical look, he said, where do you think we came from? Meaning, how could we just be here without a God? How does it make sense? So let's say, okay, you don't believe in God. And it just emerged, evolution, dirt, dust, uh, carbon dioxide, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, all life, da da da, da. And then it all, well, where'd that come from? So where is it in the onion within the onion within the onion within the onion, the block within the block? I've faced these questions since I'm a little boy. I mean, have I found the answer? Yes, I, fo I found the answer. I wouldn't be here if I didn't find the answer. By genetics, I should have been dead 30 years ago. And I don't know. Sure, I'm a heavy nutrition guy. I mean, I'm saturated with antioxidants. I wrote the book on antioxidants when most of you didn't ever hear of them. I read the, all the good literature. The Shoot Brothers on vitamin E were 50 years ahead of their time, 1950s. 
the B6 story, read about it. I read about all the stuff, and I enacted all of it. Linus Pauling was the genius of geniuses. I've been on massive doses of ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, for over, I don't know, 40 years. I wouldn't be here without that. Multivitamins. You know, so, so, yeah, I take the stuff, but I truly believe that the spirit, in terms of longevity and health, is as important, if not more important, than everything else. I'll tell you that right now. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is in within me, and I believe it animates me every day on this radio show. So I say to myself, okay, so what does God want from me? What do you mean I'm on the radio because God wants me? Or what does he want me to do that I'm not doing? What am I doing for God today? Saying we should ban assault weapons? Asking the people to listen to me and follow my opinion that God does exist, that he is not omnipotent, but he is omnipresent? Is that what God really wanted? Does he want them to buy the book so that they see the Old Testament sprinkled throughout and maybe they'll be brought back to, uh, I don't know, the faith of their childhood? I don't know what he wants. I said I never met him. I don't know where he is. I'm sure enough that if he's there, he'll be there. And as Rocky Graziano said, somebody up there likes me, and I sure hope it applies to me. And all I can say to all of you listeners who listen to me all these years and who listen to me today, I hope somebody up there likes you. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Everybody is talking about superfoods. Those are nutritionally dense foods that are especially beneficial to your health. I hope you know that beets are one of the most powerful superfoods you can put into your body. They're loaded with an important nutrient that increases your blood flow, which increases your energy. But who wants to eat a pile of beets every day? I don't. But now you can get the energy benefits of beets in a powerful, concentrated superfood drink, Super Beets. Only Super Beets is made from beets grown to exacting standards and then concentrated into superfood crystals. You see, Super, Super Beets promotes the body's own natural ability to produce healthier circulation for increased energy and stamina all day long. So listen to me. If you want the benefits of a powerful superfood, all you got to do is call 800-481-0504 or go to savagelovesbeats.com. It's that simple. And with your first order, you're going to get another 30-day supply of Super Beats free plus indicator strips to see how Super Beats is working for you and also free shipping. All you got to do is call 800-481-0504 or go to savagelovesbeats.com. And now let's go to michaelsavage.com. Here are some stories that I haven't gotten to. Syrian teen arrested for plotting terror attack <clears throat> was given asylum without vetting. Background check. Thank you, liberals. A teen from Syria, as we warned you, let in by your stupid liberal policies, has just been arrested for plotting a terror attack. He was given asylum because of the liberal mental cases who didn't want to vet him or give him a background check. They just want open borders. Thank you very much. Liberalism is a mental disorder. Also on my website, if you haven't seen Michael Savage on the Mike Huckabee Show discussing God, faith, and reason, uh, I did this over the weekend. It's up on my website, and here's some top stories up there linked up. FBI cannot get into church shooter's phone. That is because Apple will not cooperate with the FBI and give away the shooter's encryption code. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice to see that Tim Cook is more powerful than the president? Isn't it nice to see that Tim Cook is more powerful than the FBI? Isn't it nice to see that Tim Cook is more powerful than DHS? Isn't it powerful to see that Tim Cook is more powerful than any general in the United States of America? When did you vote for Tim Cook? Church killer escaped the mental hospital. Still got a gun. He escaped the nut house. He still got his hands on an assault weapon. That's all. California hepatitis A outbreak continues to grow. Thank you, Jerry Brown. Let's see what I... Secret Service makes arrest at the White House after tip a man wanted to kill all white, pe white police. Very nice. Brave mom trying to shield her kids during Texas massacre. I can't even read it. Chicago close to recording 600th homicide. I can say a lot of things about that, but I dare not. Tension rises between Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Lebanon. Well, there's a coup going on. I haven't really given you my opinion on that, but it's pretty clear. Homelessness surges on the West Coast as cities struggle to cope. First sexually transmitted Zika case confirmed in Miami-Dade County. Thank you very much, useless 
CDC. See, uh, Trump didn't do the right thing. He should have fired the head of the, C- the CDC the minute he became president. I tried to get him to do it. He didn't listen to me. I tried to say, get rid of that guy. He opened our borders to the Zika cases under, uh, under Obama. What else is on my website? I can't read you with the victims of the Texas church shooting. They're just like your neighbor. Rand Paul was attacked over a trivial neighbor dispute, says a lawyer. Kevin Spacey's brother says their father was a Nazi child rapist. What? What? What's that story? I always like Kevin Spacey as an actor. Now i got to think about his perversion. Uh, you know, certain things I don't want to think about. One of them is Kevin Spacey's proclivities. Can't I just watch his movies, which I used to enjoy, not to think about what he does with people? I don't want to think about it. I guess I have to now. The world is, uh, is just one gigantic Halloween pumpkin. And inside that carving is another carving of a Frankenstein face. And inside that carving is the face of the Texas shooter who looks just like, just like who? Hmm? Who does he look like? Why, that famous actor in the horror movies. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Questions are very clear. Should constitutional amendments be preserved, meaning the Second Amendment? Of course, we believe in it. But when the hell did the Second Amendment ever say you shall have the right to have a basically an assault weapon? That's what it is. Let's stop parsing words. I own, I own them. I know what they are. Well, what do I really need it for? Tell me. What am I waiting for? The day the government comes to get me? And what am I going to do? Hold off a platoon of uh, government agents? You know, you people are living in a dream world. Look at what happened where people had machine guns. What are they using them for? No, you don't need them. In fact, I'm going to give you another reason why you don't need an assault weapon for home defense. Are you ready for it? You haven't read this anywhere yet. Haven't heard it on radio, seen it on television. Are you ready for this? Every cop knows this. Let us say someone breaks into your house and you use a a, um, uh, um, oh, a Ruger Mini 14, an AR-15, whatever you have, to fire in his direction. Those rounds will go through a wall and kill one of your family members. They're so potent, they'll go through a wall. Do you understand what I just said to you? Something you have not thought about, but every cop knows that a, an assault weapon is one of the worst things you could ever have for home defense. You never heard that yet, did you? And I'm a gun owner ever since high school, so please, it's coming from someone who knows what he's talking about. Most cops in this country would agree with me, incidentally. I can't imagine there's a police officer listening to this show across America or anywhere else in the world who would say, yes, Americans have a right to have an assault weapon. I have no idea what you need them for. That's number one. Number two, it will go through, the rounds will go through a wall, kill one of your family members. Shotgun is the single best defense mechanism for a house. Learn how to use it. They're complicated weapons, by the way. Because shotguns, the mechanism of a shotgun is very complicated. I will tell you that right now. Loading, unloading, making sure the chamber is empty. It's not for an amateur. This is a very, very complex weapon, um, a shotgun. A handgun is probably as good as you're going to get. 15, 20 round clip. What, what more do you need? Handgun, shotgun to defend yourself in your house. What do you need that for? Tell me what for. I really want to know what you think you need it for. What do you need it for? What do you need it for? And should we reopen the mental hospitals? Governor Brown, is it not time to clean up the streets of the mentally deranged and give them the help that they need? I stumbled on an article. I couldn't believe what I looked at. Texas church gunman escaped from mental health facility in 2012 after threatening military superiors. This maniac was in a nuthouse, and he escaped, and he still got a gun. Well, how did he get a gun if he was in a nuthouse? How? How? Because apparently the data system didn't work. His name was never entered by the Air Force. It shows you what geniuses we have in the military. 
I wonder what clerk in the military did that. What heroic clerk in the uh, Air Force refused to enter this idiot's name into the national database. The maniac who opened fire in a church outside San Antonio, killing at least 26 people, escaped from a mental health facility in 2012 after he was caught sneaking guns onto an Air Force base and attempting to carry out death threats made against military superiors, according to a police report. Listen very carefully. I can't believe this article. Officers with the El Paso, Texas police were dispatched to a bus terminal after Devin P. Kelly's escape from a behavioral facility seven miles away in New Mexico. Officers wrote that they were told Kelly, who intended to take a bus out of state, was a danger to himself and others at the time, and noted that he was also facing military criminal charges. It's the same year that Kelly was court-martialed. He was charged with abusing his wife and son, kicking this little infant in the head. He got a gun. Imagine the country we live in. Can you imagine the country we live in that even a man who escaped a nut house and kicked an infant in the head can get a gun? Now, the story is that there was a breakdown in military protocols that failed to flag his domestic violence conviction, which should have kept him from buying guns. But let me tell you something. Even if he was on that database, he could have bought a gun, as we all know. I know, I know. I know all you people are going to say, what about Chicago, which has the strictest gun control laws in America? How come they're able to kill everyone? Blah, 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 blah. I've heard it all before. I've heard all sides of the argument. Well, something has to be done. Kelly was inside the church for a very long period of time. He went around freely as he gunned down people gathering for Sunday morning services. One woman who was wounded during the shootings described Kelly firing at churchgoers who tried to leave, shooting round after round at those injured and wounded on the ground. David Brown's mother, Farida, was shot in the leg, said she described Kelly firing four shots into the torso of a woman on her left. With every shot, she was crying, Brown said of the woman. She was just staring at my mom while she tried to comfort her. As he fired rounds into the woman, Farida Brown held her hand, telling her she was heading to heaven. Yeah, she's heading to heaven. She's heading to heaven. You know, this is very trying for me, more so than you can imagine. I am on the, the, the cusp, if you want to put it to you that way, of the publication of God, Faith, and Reason. Today, I don't know if I have any reason or faith left. I can't have much left in me when I see a thing like this and I see the ignorance of the American people, both sides trying to make politics out of this. Immediately, the Democrats trying to impose gun control laws. The bodies are still, are still, are still on the ground. They're not even cold yet. And the demagogues on the left are immediately trying to seize all guns. They're not going to stop at limiting assault rifles, I can guarantee you. No, sorry, Bob. I'm going to give you one from the heart. It's simple. Ban SSRIs, too many suicides, homicides, and demand the release of church killers' medical records. Number three, reopen the mental hospitals. Number four, we need much, much more discussion about background checks for gun purchases. You know, I'm going to talk about it. I don't care what, what you say. Oh, well, he's a gun grabber. No, say what you want. It's okay with me. But listen very carefully. Let's say you have a constitutional right to drive, don't you? What do you say? I have a right to drive my wagon. I have a right to drive my horse. Then I have a right to drive my, ho my car. I have a right to drive my truck. Yes, you do. You have a right to free movement. But there's a licensing to drive a car or a truck, isn't there? You have to show you know how to follow a a sign on the road, you know how to drive where the pedal is, where to go, where to stop, where to brake, with this or that. You know how to stop, you know how to go, you know how to slow down, you know how to read the signs. Wouldn't that be the basics? Why are there no such requirements for another right that you have, which is the right to bear arms? Why is one 100% free and the other one somewhat requiring some control? What are you afraid of? I heard, I know what you're afraid of. I heard, well, that government will come down and get us. Lest we're all armed and go out like the militia. Yeah, you and all the talk show hosts, all the tough guys. All the tough guys in talk radio are going to lead you on there. Onward Christian soldiers with their rare assault weapons. They'll run so fast you wouldn't be able to say Mickey Mouse. They'd be squeaking like a Mickey Mouse in the studio if the government ever came down on them. No, no one's standing up to a government that becomes that oppressive. It is good to have guns. It is great to protect yourself. It is great to protect yourself against an oppressive government. I agree with you, but you need some laws. You need some restrictions. I don't want the next killer to get a gun. If I can stop it in any way, I don't want the next, the next Devin Patrick Kelly to be armed to the gills. Do you? No, sorry, Bob. 
This is the uh, savage nation. I want pills controlled. I want drugs controlled. I want nuts in the bug houses where they belong. I want the streets cleaned up of the homeless. I want them all institutionalized along with the nuts in separate facilities so they can all get the treatment that they need. And if you privatize the mental hospitals, many of which still exist, they have not all been turned into bed and breakfasts in uh, Napa County. Last I checked, Sonoma State Mental Hospital is still there. They used to have nuts, I think, as a bread and breakfast now. I don't know what it is. Maybe they still use it for some... Uh, when I was a kid in Queens, New York, there was a place we used to drive past and do like Halloween things. Creedmoor Mental Hospital. Red brick building, metal on the windows. I don't know if it's still there. It's probably a uh, disco right now. I don't know, like a club. Probably a nightclub. The Creedmoor Nightclub. Why not reopen Creedmoor Mental Hospital type of thing everywhere in the country? Keep them clean. Keep them well, well staffed. Treat the people well privatize them because you're spending the money anyway on homeless services by the way in many cases many homeless people are mentally ill and they need help they're not getting the help they need by defecating in a mailbox yet last week halloween we had the muslim gentleman that's a joke who jumped the the walkway and ran people over you forgot that already take me out to the ball game there you are already Dodgers game, Schmodgers game, Hodgers game, Rogers game. Dodgers game, Hodgers game, Rogers game. You forgot already the, the, the Muslim that went mad in the streets following ISIS. Then the church shooting. What is tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow going to bring in this mad nation of ours? Why is the president in Asia altogether? I've been asking myself that all weekend. What did he go there for? Who misadvised him? What is he doing with this goodwill tour? What do we need a goodwill tour? A goodwill tour with Asia. You want me to talk about that for a minute? I'll be glad to because I've talked about it to a number of people over the weekend. Who advised the president to do a goodwill tour to Asia? Maybe they advised six months ago. The thing has changed. The world's changed. Number one, first of all, I'm not, it's a nightmare of security to send them to these countries. Let's start with that. Philippines, Vietnam, China, Japan. What is he doing in all these countries? You want an Asian summit? Okay, Mr. President, you listen to Michael Savage. You hold it at the East-West Center in Honolulu. You invite the Asian leaders to Honolulu. That way you have control over the security in one place instead of five places. Number two, you have control over the food, Mr. President, which I am freaked out over. Remember a couple of years ago, way, way, way back, President Bush the first. Uh, was seen puking his guts up in Japan. Well, it was said to be food poisoning. I understand that I almost died once in Japan from food poisoning. It was the chicken at the airport. Maybe it wasn't the food poisoning. Maybe they gave him a sprinkle job. <clears throat> Maybe they sprinkled a little uh, secret uh, you know, herb on him. Maybe they sprinkled a little magic mushroom into his food to embarrass the American president. Why would you expose Donald Trump to all of these uh, um, un, uh, un variables that you can't control. Who's cooking the food for him in these countries? He's not Napoleon with a train behind him with his own chef and a cow that he's going to slaughter in each country or a pig or a chicken that he can kill. The cook doesn't travel with him. So he's getting food in all these countries. I'm very worried about it. There are, I'm an expert in herbal medicine. And I'm not going to tell you the names of them, but there are Chinese and other Asian herbs that, are, that act invisibly. They're tasteless. They're odorless. You can't smell them. You can't taste them. And they can be put into your uh, food. Slow acting, long acting, short acting. Why is he there? I don't like it. I hope I'm wrong. I hope that my, I hope that my normal suspiciousness is just that. And now we come back home to what's going on here now. Congress is in session like nothing happened yesterday. Police did nothing. FBI did nothing. Oh, they couldn't do anything after the fact. Oh, they couldn't? Somehow two citizens did something. They saw the guy. One got into a gunfight. And with the other two of them chased him down the highway. They did something. They didn't, they didn't call home for permission to chase him down the highway. Thank God the man's life ended, whether by his own hand or by someone else's hand. Thank God we didn't have to listen to his story on ABC News. Thank God we didn't have to have uh, one of the 
vultures in the media interviewing him in a jail cell. Just thank God. That's all I can say. Thank God for small favors, I guess, in this sense. Works here. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. These are times the test man's soul, and it's very. it would be very easy for me to get up here and say, well, no, the Second Amendment is a blanket um, freedom to own guns and do whatever you want with them. It is not. Every one of the amendments to the Constitution, I will remind you of this, has restrictions. In other words, the Second Amendment says we shall have the right to bear arms, upheld by uh, many court cases, Supreme Court in particular, Heller in particular, without restriction. No restrictions at all? Really? Okay, so let's have a conversation about the other amendments. First Amendment of the Constitution says freedom of the press, freedom of speech. I have freedom of speech. You have freedom of speech up to a point. There are restrictions. You can't threaten the president. Threaten the president, you're going to be visited by the Secret Service. That's a restriction. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. That's a restriction to the First Amendment. So if there are restrictions to some amendments then why should there be no restrictions on the Second Amendment? How did that happen? You say, well, there are. Oh, really, there are? Then even a, a nut who escaped the mental hospital can buy one? No, then, then you got to tighten it up a little bit more. I don't want the next nut getting an assault rifle. Do you? Texas church gunman escaped from mental health facility in 2012 after threatening military superiors. Sorry, he shouldn't have been able to get guns. Okay, so he got around the law. What law? Now, I know that this is controversial, and I repeat it again until you hear me. You've got to hear me. This is not coming from a left-wing commie Marxist from hell. This is coming from Michael Savage, the father of borders, language, and culture. A gun owner, a gun owner, member of the rifle team in high school. Yes, that matters. Because most of the frauds in the media who claim to be red, white, and blue John Waynes were afraid of guns when they were in high school. Most of them were on medication. That's where I'm coming from. And I don't think there are too many cops who disagree with me. An awful lot of cops are shot by lunatics with assault rifles. And I'll repeat again until you hear me. Use the fallacious argument you need for home defense. The rounds will go right through a wall and kill one of your family members. Or worse yet, not worse yet, it can't get worse than that. You're going to unload your 30-round your clip on someone who broke into your house. The bullets will go through a wall and kill your child. Shotgun pellets will not go through a wall, by the way. There was a chance that a handgun's round could go through a wall, but not when you're firing 15 shots as opposed to firing, what, 30 shots over and over again? Why was this man allowed to have an assault rifle? And, and by the way, he was found with multiple... Oh, God, why do I even have to talk about this? Why is the burden falling upon me? Why is it so hard to have a common-sense discussion in this country without being accused of being a pink Okami from you nowhere? I am a man who tries to express to you what I think makes sense. It is what I have done for 23 going on, 24 years, I believe. I don't know how long it is. It's almost a quarter of a century of talking. Uh, as I've said to you before, I call him as I see him. You don't have to agree with me, but please don't crucify me for disagreeing with your doxy on guns because I no longer think that Americans need to run around with 30-round clips and assault rifles, not after this church shooting. Something has to change, and it's up to we the people to demand that the idiotic cowardly, imbecilic, corrupt politicians do something to protect us before another house of worship is shot up by another Kelly. Savage. Assault weapons should be banned in the United States or not banned? Let's read the pro and con on that one. Let's read the pro ban. A pro ban on assault weapons being banned says, a ban on assault weapons would not be a slippery slope to an all-gun ban. Most individuals seeking a ban on assault weapons just want assault weapons to be banned. 
Another pro-ban argument is all weapons empower the deranged to kill many people. While the phrase guns don't kill people, people kill people is used widely, what it misses is the extent to which assault weapons enable deranged individuals to kill massively. That is 100% true. If this bum only had a single-shot rifle, he would have been taken down by some of the men in that, in that church. I can guarantee they would have broken his skull open with a chair. They had no chance because he had a machine gun in his hand. Law enforcement agents are put at greater risk due to assault weapons. Assault weapons are responsible for one in five deaths of law enforcement agents. A shotgun, pistol, or rifle is all you need for self-defense. That's a thousand percent true. These are powerful weapons with heavy destructive force. And they can easily kill multiple assailants in rapid succession when used properly. You don't need anything more than a shotgun or a pistol next to your bed. And I, In fact, I'll go a step further than you. You're sleeping in the dark. Someone breaks into your house. You can't even aim a rifle in the dark. You could aim a shotgun in the general direction of the, of the uh, intruder. You could generally fire a pistol in the direction of an intruder. You cannot effectively aim a rifle in the direction of an intruder. Not as well. Now, what are the arguments against banning assault weapons? Well, the Supreme Court has affirmed the individual right to bear arms. The Supreme Court has affirmed that the Second Amendment confers an individual right to bear arms. That's the Heller decision. And the intent of the 1994 assault, assault weapons ban was to decrease criminal acts in which assault weapons were used. And by the way, the assault weapons ban did not do this anyway. And while criminals wanted to carry powerful automatic weapons in the 90s, they now prefer handguns as they are concealable and yet still have the necessary deadly force for them to commit crimes. Also against the ban is the argument that assault weapons are superior for self-defense. Another argument against banning assault weapons is that assault weapon bans would not necessarily prevent someone from acquiring one to perform another mass shooting. That's, that's a fallacious argument because it would limit the amount of guns in, in circulation. Okay, so... I'm asking you, the people who have lived through this now, not personally, what needs to be done? Should mental hospitals be reopened? Governor Edmund Pat Brown closed them in California. There used to be mental hospitals in every community in America. I remember growing up in Queens, New York, there was Creedmoor Hospital. They locked up the dangerous nuts. Take a look at the streets of New York, the streets of San Francisco, the streets of Dallas, the streets of Chicago. Look at the streets of America and you tell me that most of these people in the gutters who you call homeless are not mentally deranged and tell me they don't deserve proper treatment in a mental health facility. They do and they should be arrested and locked up against their will and get them off the damn streets. Many of them are dangerous psychopaths. They're not just poor, downtrodden, sick people. That's number one. Psychiatric meds. Big, big story. First, you need to ban the psychiatric meds from the broad-scale use in which they are currently applied. Point blank, we can no longer be puppets of the pharmaceutical industry. Now, many of you are thinking cynically, you know, all he's trying to do is appeal to liberals by calling for an assault weapons ban or restriction. Well, let me tell you something. Not one liberal outlet has said, oh, look at that. There's the former conservative Michael Savage calling for an assault weapons ban. Let's have him on our show. NPR didn't call, ABC, CBS, NBC, no one called. So don't think I'm doing it because I want to be on their television shows. Devin Patrick Kelly should not have had a gun. We're asking ourselves, what is the shooting doing to you? I'm, out, I'm appalled, by the way, that Congress is in session. I'm appalled that it's business as usual for the deadbeats called congressmen and senators. I'm appalled that there's not a national day of mourning. I'm appalled... By the whole situation, this is the deadliest shooting in a place of worship, both in U.S. and Texas history, and I'm sorry business should come to a halt in the halls of Congress. This is sickening. We should be talking about reopening the mental hospitals and tightening gun laws. It's easy enough to say, well, if there was no other guy with a gun, which is 100% true, doesn't mean the other thing is false. It is true that he was stopped by someone with a gun, but it was after he killed everyone. Okay. So one thing begs the other question, which is how did he get a gun if he was thrown into the military for being a, a bug job? And it turns out he was on meds all through his junior high school years. 
You know, they give out medication in the military like M&Ms, like candy. Did you know that they're drugging most of the, not excuse me, they're drugging a good portion of the military population to subdue them? Did you know that? Have you looked into the scandal of military doctors prescribing psychiatric meds like their M&Ms? You know, a lot of guys are drugged in the military. A lot of women are drugged in the military. Say, well, so what? Maybe they need it. Well, maybe they don't need it. Meds and guns, a toxic mix. Why was a killer with a bad conduct discharge able to get a gun? Should we bring back mental hospitals? What is the shooting doing to you? How do we deal with this loss? What is God trying to teach us through this tragedy? Is he even involved? Well, I came up with a one-liner, God is not dead, man is dead to God, which is certainly true. It's the first original thing that has been said about Nietzsche's statement, God is dead, ever since Nietzsche said it. I do not know of a theologian, and I challenge anyone in the audience to tell me whoever wrote that before. I did not plagiarize it so far as I know. I'd like to believe it's original. Is there anyone listening who can tell me who wrote, God is not dead, man is dead to God? Because I haven't seen it anywhere. And I've read, I've read theological writings. I've read the Bible. I've written on the subject. My book will be out next week. Where did that come up before? God is not dead. Man is dead to God. I haven't seen it anywhere. Well, maybe I have something to teach you. Maybe you have some insights, some anecdotes, some memoirs that would help thread the needle of understanding in my book. I would hope so. We know that a sharpshooting plumber fired the shot that took down the Texas madman. We know that. Thank God for him. Thank God there's some men left in Texas. We'll play the sound of the hero describing how he tracked down the church shooter after he attacked. And the hero, by the way, Johnny Langendorf, who, who didn't fire the shot that stopped him, but he certainly gave pursuit, is the exact kind of man that the New Yorkers fear. Cowboy hat, tattoos up to his neck, scraggly beard, looks like he works on cars, looks like he actually has a girlfriend or a wife, probably has some gun training since childhood. Everything that the Woody Allens of the world, in my opinion, fear was in that one man. So let's listen now to Johnny Langendorf, one of the heroes who chased down the Texas madman, as he describes his pursuit of the psychopathic individual who was shot dead, either by himself or by one of the pursuers. I pulled up on the intersection and I saw the shooter coming from the cars, actually at right outside the church that were parked, is... Vehicle was parked, door open, engine running, and him and the neighbor across the street were both coming out about the same time, exchanging fire. And um, as he came up, he I never got a look at him. I never really saw him. I just, I saw the gunfire. The shooter got in his truck. Uh, the gentleman in the ri with the rifle came to my truck as the shooter took off and he briefly he briefed me quickly on what had just happened and said that we had to get him and so that's what I did. I was on the phone with dispatch the entire time as far as I could see um, Wilson County Police were all headed to the church and on 539 I did not see any police and so I gave them direction the direction we were going on what road and everything and that you know the vehicle was in sight and I was picking up, getting closer and closer. We just take pursuit. Uh, we we speed over 87 through traffic, and we, like I said, we hit about 95 going down 539 trying to catch this guy until he eventually lost control on his own and went off in the ditch. He just hurt so many people, and he just affected so many people's lives. Why wouldn't you want to take him down? My only prayer is that the psychopaths in, in the police don't take down the hero and say he illegally shot him. You know, I watched the press conference. I got angrier by the minute. There was the governor congratulating the, the police chief who was congratulating the sheriff, who was congratulating the FBI, congratulating the ATF. They did nothing. What were they congratulating each other for? I kept screaming at the television. What are you guys congratulating each other for? Here's John who did this, and here's Bob who did that, and here's Harold who did this. I'd like to introduce Schmendrick from the FBI, and over from this field office and that field office, and one field office and that field office and my field office and your field office. They did nothing. It was the ordinary man who tracked him down and shot him. What were you congratulating yourself for? What'd you actually do? Nothing. It's sickening to watch this. Are they all that out of touch with reality that they thought we wanted to watch the governor look like Mr. Peepers up there 
talking about nothing, it was sickening. I recognize that if you're a conservative or on the right or an independent, you're supposed to say like a knee jerker, well, no, we don't want any restrictions on who can own guns. No, we don't want any restrictions on uh, the number of rounds of ammunition you can carry in a clip. I truthfully have been a gun owner since I'm very young, and I'll say it again in case you want to confuse me with some liberal New Yorker. I was on the high school rifle team long before any of the fake conservatives suddenly found that it's a good way to make money to make believe that you're a, a right winger. The fact of the matter is I own guns. I was on the rifle team. I'm not afraid of guns. I have no idea why a human being in this country needs a 30-round clip. That's number one. Number two, apparently people are able to hunt elephants with single-shot rifles for as long as, uh, as I know. I mean, elephant guns had one shot in them. They didn't machine gun elephants, did they? Did they have an assault rifle to kill an elephant? They used an elephant gun, which I think was a 306 round. One single round could bring down an elephant. So what in the hell do you need a 30-round clip for? I know you're all waiting for the government to come uh, and take over your uh, your community, and you're going to stand up like Paul Revere, and you're going to say, charge. You won't say charge. You'll drop your gun, you'll drop your shorts, and you'll run out like everyone else. So stop pretending that you're a big hero. This is enough is enough. This church shooting is killing me. Should assault weapons be banned? Should multiple round clips be banned? Is, um, is it time to bring back mental hospitals? Should we greatly restrict the wholesale application of antidepressant drugs on a massive population? Huh? And by the way, they're still trying, the FBI is still trying to break into the phone of this piece of human garbage who did this, this, this evil, evil, evil man who did this to the parishioners in that church. His phone is encrypted with encryption devices. I am so fed up with these maniacs, whether they're shooting up a church or shooting up this nation. Whether they be a Texas church shooter or a Silicon Valley monster who thinks he's bigger than the government, it's time to crack down. And on another topic, by the way, North Korea, is Trump provoking Kim Jong mentally ill on by visiting South Korea and making such provocative statements? Is he intimidating Kim Jong un or is he provoking Kim Jong un? I want answers to all these questions. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855 400 Savage. 855 400 7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. I'm almost tongue-tied from what goes on in this world. Almost tongue-tied from what goes on. There's no sense anymore. The world exploded for me that day in that church. My view of God, my view of faith, my view of reason exploded. My legs got cut out from under me. I tried my best to maintain my belief in some higher power who could control things like this. But, well, it actually goes to my book itself where I say God is omnipresent but not omnipotent. I do say that in the book. That's the one thing that saved me 30 years ago from giving up my faith in God. I'll tell you that. And if you only get that from my book, you'll get an awful lot. I'll say it again, which is this. God is not omnipotent. God is omnipresent. That's my opinion. Because it means we have free will. And there are crazy people out there. There are great people out there. There are saintly people out there. I don't believe God controls everything that we do. I don't believe God pulled the trigger of that assault rifle in that church. If you want to argue God, maybe he let the man who shot him pull the trigger, but I don't believe that at all. I think that was chance as well. God is omnipresent. If I believe God was omnipotent, I would cease to believe this minute right on this radio show. I'd say don't buy my book. But I don't believe God is omnipresent. I don't believe he controls the evil of the world. Are there cases where God can enter and intervene? I hope so. Go in a cancer ward, a leukemia ward with little children and tell me what you think about omnipotence and, and omnipresence. Go and see the suffering and the dying on a battlefield. Go see the soul, the sailor, the, sorry, the, 
the military guys who come home without legs or arms. Tell me what, what they believe. Chance. There's chance. Ask anyone who's been in combat. They'll tell you it's pure chance when the bullets start flying. Who gets hit and who doesn't get hit. So, no, I'm not ready to burn my book, God, Faith, and Reason. I'm ready to tell you that I've been struggling with the same question since I've been a child. Where is God? Where is he today? Where is he today when we need him? Expect him to come down in a, in a white robe? He's there. I can't say any more about it right now. I'm not ready to talk about the scriptures, God and country, God and man, God, faith, and reason. Not yet. Not yet. I am still a child when it comes to these issues. I'm simply a child when it comes to these bigger issues. At the end of the day, we're all children, and we don't have the answers. We have, yeah, they say the questions. That's true. I do have one answer, which I gave to you just now, which is that God is not omnipotent. God is omnipresent. That will give you peace of mind. And if you just get that line out of my whole book, it's worth the price of admission. There's a lot more in there than that. Why did God create the world? What is man's role in creation? Does God intervene in how much? What is the relationship between God and science? It's all in my book. Are they the definitive answers? Of course not. It's one man's opinion. People have been pondering this since the burning bush. <laughs> since the burning bush, people have been asking these questions. Let's go back to the simple politics of the day. Assault weapons, should they be banned or not? Do Americans favor stricter gun control laws, yes or no? Well, you can get any poll to say anything you want. The president came out and said no. The gun control may have stopped the hero from stopping the attack. Savage.